After purchasing and using the Fujifilm Instax Mini Neo Classic, I learned pretty quickly that I wanted something more substantial in terms of film size. The Fujifilm Instax Mini film itself was just too small for me and I wanted a picture that was bigger and easier to view. So the move to the Fujifilm Instax Wide 300 was a very obvious move as at the time of this video this is the only Instax Wide camera that's in production from Fujifilm. So today we're going to be taking a look at this camera and really my overall thoughts on it and some of the problems that I ran into while using this camera. The Fujifilm Instax Wide 300 camera itself is very minimalistic and very straightforward as this is really just a point and shoot instant film camera. On the front we have the power button which turns the camera on and the shutter release which fires the camera and takes your picture. On the lens itself is the focusing ring which when turned allow you to choose between two focusing distances from 0.9 meters to 3 meters and 3 meters to infinity. On the back, along with the LCD screen that shows you how many shots you have left, are two buttons. The first button is the light and dark button. This is essentially the exposure compensation button. Light lightens up the image while dark darkens it. The second button is the flash button, which can be used to turn the flash on and off. But one thing to note is that when the camera determines that there is not enough light, the flash will automatically be turned on no matter what. There is no way to turn this off. One thing to consider when taking pictures with this camera is to just be mindful of objects that you're taking pictures of. Very bright things like the sun or even the flash itself reflecting off a reflective surface will turn into a black spot in your final film. If you look at the images that I've shown on screen, you can see that there are black spots in various places. And like I said, whether it's the sun or just a flash or a bright headlight, they will all turn to black if it is too bright. I think that the most annoying thing about this camera for me is the flash because like I said earlier if the camera thinks it's too dark the flash will automatically turn on and there's no way around this even though relatively speaking there is a lot of light in the room or the vicinity. This feature is understandable but my problem is that the camera really overcompensates for the flash and essentially if your subject is close and the flash actually lights the subject up and you can see it Everything in the background would turn black, giving it that very cheesy flash look that really is not very appealing to me. The flash itself is not very powerful, as you can see it is very small. So if your subject is about 5 feet away, it will light up the subject fairly well. But if let's say you're 10 feet, 15, 20 feet away, you can pretty much consider your subject to be black as the flash will not reach them and essentially not light them up. For the most part, I consider the flash to be completely useless as, like I said, when it does work, your subject is lit up but the background is just black and it gives this really cheesy uh, on-camera flash look which is understandable but it's just not really something that I look for. The most frustrating thing for me about this camera is really its inability to handle light and that's really a problem when you're using a camera as essentially everything is composed up of light. When we look at this camera, we have to remember that the lens on the front is a fixed aperture f14 lens and the film that you're putting into the camera is ISO 800. And if you understand camera theory and how to take pictures in manual mode, this will bring up various problems in your mind. If you're shooting in a bright sunny day or just a place that has a lot of lighting, your highlights are going to be completely blown out. If it gets dark and just dusk or nighttime or just anywhere that's dark your shadows and everything is just going to be crushed and everything's going to show up as black if you look at these first photos you can see that they are overexposed the buildings are bright and even the faces in the people situations like these call for the dark mode but really even in dark mode it might not even work as you can see with this mount fuji picture Dark mode was used but you can barely make out the mountain or the snow on the mountain because it's just too bright. But of course when you're using dark mode it darkens everything else in the picture too. So the trees are completely crushed and there is no data left to recover. Another situation is when you have a source of bright light like the sky but you're in shadow like the buildings. The camera overcompensates for the sky and of course all the shadows are crushed again and there is really no data within the foreground. 
To me, this camera should really only be used during the daytime, as even at dusk or when it gets darker during the day, you're really not going to get anything unless your subject is standing a few feet away from you and you're using flash and you want to light them up, you're not really going to see anything. Any far away buildings, landscape or anything, they will be completely gone. Just really use this during the day, but remember, if it's too bright of a day, your pictures will be overexposed. One other issue that I would like to bring up is the viewfinder in this camera. I don't know if this is a problem particular to this camera, but I seem to be having a faulty viewfinder. When I would raise the camera to my eye, I could see that the viewfinder is moving around a bit and it would just move and stop and I'll be good. And this used to not be as big as a problem when I first got the camera, but now I can definitely see it moving a lot more and happening more often. In my mind, this is a problem that should not be happening as this is an independent viewfinder. It has nothing to do with the camera or it is not seeing through the lens. So it essentially just acts as a little window for you to see. Having the viewfinder move around like that just makes it very difficult to just line everything up. As sometimes when I'm shooting and I look at the final picture, I can see that it, the subject was not lined where I wanted to. The picture was just not composed correctly how I saw it in the viewfinder. And this also makes it difficult to level out the horizon as you can expect. The viewfinder is moving around and when it settles, it might not settle perfectly straight. So a lot of my horizons are just everywhere. All of that being said, I loved using this camera. It was something that I looked forward to and wanted to do every day and I made myself do every day. I've taken at least one picture with this camera every day since I've gotten it. Even though I have a lot of pictures that are throwaways and not really usable, when you do get that one good picture, you know, it's just so rewarding and you're just looking at this Polaroid and it's like, man, that's a really good looking picture. And, and it's something that I don't think that can be replicated on digital, on my Sony's or anything else because it is just the Fujifilm Instax picture and it's just, it is what it is and it is so rewarding to me. So if you're interested in picking this camera up, I could highly recommend it, but just keep in mind that you might be throwing away a lot of shots at first because you really have to get used to the camera and get used to how it takes pictures. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share this video, comment down below telling me your experience with this camera or just any general question. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.